Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I'd really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it and you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. And today we are discussing the 2016 model year debut, Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch Moonface. 44.25 millimeters in stainless steel. You can see on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, it wears well because it's fairly constrained from lug to lug, only 49.8 millimeters across the wrist, making this watch suitable for a wrist as small as 14 to 14 and a half centimeters circumference. It is thick, however, 16.8 millimeters thick with a 21 millimeter spacing between the lugs. You'll find that the standard bracelet is probably your best bet, even though a 21 millimeter strap would look great and a NATO in particular would be well suited to this watch. The bracelet's a handsome piece. You can see that Omega is learning its lesson about fit across the wrist. We're seeing more and more pivoted end links rather than rigid end links so you can pull the bracelet straight down around a smaller wrist. The bracelet itself is a handsome piece. It's somewhere between a dress watch and a sports watch bracelet. Three links like a sports watch bracelet but you can see their oval and cross section polished on their outer face. The intermediates are polished. Satin finish is dominant so it doesn't look too glam, too glaring. Nicely made. You can see that the removable links are fixed by screws. There's a half link on either side of the bracelet so you can do some precise sizing and then internally there's a thoughtful 9.6 millimeter of incremental adjustment thanks to a push button slider so you have the ability to fine tune on the fly without tools. The clasp is milled out and very solid. Twin trigger release nicely made. You can see there's a handsome polished bevel along the side, satin on the flank, satin on the top, and then polished lozenge style pushers that match the cross section of the removable links. You'll also note that the case is highly familiar. Liar style lugs, they turn inward and then they turn outward and they do each alternately with the outward facing tumble home polished, a little streak of polish that runs from lug to lug, the center being rather narrow with horizontal satin finish, and then you can see that the underside of the tachymeter bezel is all of high polish. You'll also note that the tachymeter bezel itself, or at least the insert, is of ceramic and thus very highly scratch resistant. Talking a bit about the tachymeter, you can use it in conjunction with the chronograph to gauge the speed of an object over a fixed distance such as a standing mile or a standing kilometer. The dial itself is a black lacquer, and you can see all applique indices and hands white gold for this flagship piece. The lacquer is glossy and gleaming. It features two polished chaptering mono counters. At 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock, you have chronograph hours and minutes at 3 o'clock, and then you have the lunette style month indicator and constant seconds at 9 o'clock. There is a crescent style moon phase aperture down at 6 o'clock for a photorealistic moon phase, and it's a lovely piece. You'll actually appreciate the fact that the watch is a double quick set. In the intermediate position, the crown can adjust adjust the moon phase, or if you turn it in the opposite direction, you can adjust the quick set date. Pull the crown out all the way, you've got a hacking or stop seconds function. Of course, the watch with a vertical clutch allows you to leave the chronograph engaged full time without wear and tear. It also allows you to start the chronograph without any jump or stagger because there's no play in a vertical clutch. There's a column wheel, and if you listen, you can hear the report of the column wheel. It's very crisp, it feels good, it's one of the best in the industry, well-tuned. A column wheel, one of the more complex ways of building a chronograph, cam is cheaper, but Omega gives you the column wheel and then they skeletonize the bridge over the column wheel to let you see it. Twin mainspring barrels, 60 hour power reserve, this is caliber 9904. The two barrels are not just there for a long power reserve, they give you a excellent torque release from max wind to minimum wind, so you don't have the 24 hour drop off in torque to the escapement that you see on single barrel movements. You also appreciate that this is both a coaxial tri-level, the most modern Omega coaxial technology, very durable, very precise, but it's also a Matas chronometer, whereas the COSC chronometer standards, which this movement does meet, call only for a bare movement to be tested in five positions over two weeks with maximum variance per 24 hours of minus four plus six seconds. This watch is tested in six positions as a fully cased up watch, not a bare movement. There are eight tests, including chronometric precision, power reserve, winding efficiency, water resistance, and anti-magnetism. So the Matas chronometer standard is just tougher than COSC. You've also got a full balance bridge with a free sprung index for shock resistance, and then an SI-14 silicon hairspring for anti-magnetism. It's basically an amagnetic watch. You'll also note 100 meters water resistant, far more water resistant than a standard 50 meter moon watch. So this is a very durable and versatile all-around sportster, beaten away at 25,200 
100 vibrations per hour. You will note that there's arabesque Cote de Genève and blackened screws as opposed to polished or blued screws. It's a different looking and thoughtfully designed movement as well as a thoughtfully engineered movement. It looks good, it works well. A full service chronometer coaxial moon phase chronograph. It's the total package. See it in stainless steel and make it yours on the watch box. Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch Moon Phase by Night.